Okay, so hello and welcome to an Arduino tutorial. Today we'll be exploring one of the ways to communicate between microcontrollers. We'll be looking into infrared communication. Before we start looking into the parts, let's talk about what we're making. We'll be making our own remote control to control the state of an LED light. So this video contains two projects. The first one will be the transmitter and the second one is the receiver. Next to releasing videos about Arduino programming, we also released our electronics projects webshop. We will start selling packages with all the parts you need in this and future videos. By buying from our webshop, you get the parts you need and support the channel. Let's think about the most basic version of a remote control. It's nothing more than just one or a few buttons and a way to send the signal. And then for the receiver, its most basic version is just a way to receive the signal and do some action based upon which button has been pressed on the remote control. Now we know what our most basic version of the receiver and transmitter looks like, let's start building it. But first, we'll take a quick look at the parts we need to make these projects. For our receiver, we'll need an LED light, an infrared receiver, an Arduino Uno, and a 200 ohm resistor. Then for our transmitter, we'll need a 10 kilo ohm resistor, an infrared transmitter, a push button, and an Arduino Uno. You can optionally use two breadboards to make it easier to, to connect the wires while developing or prototyping. Now let's get started assembling our transmitter, shall we? Put your infrared transmitter and push button on your breadboard, like shown in this image. Now let's connect some power to our breadboard. So run a wire from 5 volts on your Arduino to, five, uh, to the plus on your breadboard. And then for the ground, let's run a wire from a ground on your Arduino to the ground or the minus on your breadboard. So now our breadboard has power, but we also need power in our transmitter and also on our push button. So let's hook up the 5 volts from the breadboard to the 5 volts on the transmitter, which is the left pin and ground from the transmitter, which is the center pin or the middle pin, and run it to the ground on the breadboard. And we'll do the same for the push button. But for the push button, instead of using a wire to connect the ground, we'll just be using the 10 kilo ohm resistor. Then for the positive side of the push button, we'll just run a wire from 5 volts on the breadboard to 5 volts or the input on the push button. Everything should have power now. But we also need some data lines. So let's connect the most right pin of our transmitter to digital pin number 3 on the Arduino. Then for the push button, we have to connect a wire from the top left pin on the button to digital pin number 7 on the Arduino. We have now completed the circuit of our transmitter, so let's head over to the receiver side. For our receiver, let's start with powering our breadboard again. So run a wire from 5 volts and ground on the Arduino to 5 volts and ground on the breadboard, or the plus and the minus side. Now let's power up the infrared receiver. So run a wire from the most left pin on the receiver to the ground, and then for the center pin or the middle pin, we'll be using 5 volts. So now let's connect the cathode of the LED to the ground as well. And then all, we, all that's left to do is just some data lines. To complete the circuit of the receiver, we'll have to run a wire from the most right pin on the receiver to digital pin number three on the Arduino. And then to complete the circuit of our LED light, we'll have to connect the LED's anode to digital pin number seven on the Arduino, but this time through a 200 ohm resistor. Now everything is hooked up correctly, let's dive into the codes. But before we do that, let's look at the flowcharts for it. The flowchart of our transmitter is super straightforward. We'll start out at the start block, and then when a button is pressed, 
will transmit an infrared signal and we go back to the start. Then if no button is pressed, we just go instantly go back to the start. Then the flowchart of our receiver is a bit more complicated, but it should still be fairly straightforward. We'll start at the start block again, and then the LED is turned off. And then if an infrared signal is detected, the LED is turned on. And then if an infrared signal is detected, the LED is turned off again. So what we're doing here is when we receive an infrared signal, we just alternate states of the LED light. So if the LED is turned off and we receive an infrared signal, we turn it on. And if the LED is turned on and we get an infrared signal, we turn it back off. Then when no infrared signal is detected, everything stays the same. So if the LED is turned off, it will stay off. And if it's turned on, it will stay on. We'll also add some delays to stop repetition of the same action. Because the program runs so fast, it will pick up duplicate button clicks for clicking the button just once. Now we've connected everything and know what the program should look like. Let's start writing some code. We'll start off by writing the code for our transmitter. So let's open up Visual Studio and I'll see you there. So once you've opened up Visual Studio, let's navigate to the platform IO dashboard. And once the dashboard has been loaded, let's click on the new project button and give it a name and we'll call it IR transmitter because it's our transmitter code. Then for the board, let's select the Arduino Uno again and we keep this the same. So once your project has been fully loaded, we'll first of all think about what we want to do. What we want to do is send an infrared signal when a button is pressed. We can't just magically send an infrared signal, so we'll be using a library for it. To use libraries in, on platform IO, it's actually fairly simple. We can just navigate to the library section here and search for a library. So let's search for the IR remote library and make sure to use the IR remote library written by Sheriff. And then we'll add it to the project. So we can see this is the actual name of the, the library. And then we can select the project to add it to. And we'll select the IR transmitter project. And we'll add it. As you can see in this platform io.ini file, you can see the library dependency Seed Studio IR remote has been added. Now we've got the dependency to our library, we can just start writing the code. So first of all, let's include this library, which is called iRemote. And then we'll have to define a pin for the button again. So let's constant int button pin equals 7. Because we connected the button to digital pin 7 on our Arduino. Then for the button state, we'll have to create a variable. So let's make an int button state and with a default value of zero. And then of course we want to be able to send an infrared signal. So let's make an IR send object, IR send. And then for our setup code, it's actually super simple because all we have to do is select a pin mode for our button pin and set it to be input. Because we want to read the value from the button, we have to select input. Now for a loop, let's start off with just simply reading the value of the button. So we can do that by using the digital read function and giving it the button pin. Button pin. So now if the button is pressed, so if the button state equals high, what we want to do is send the signal. So what we want to do is send a signal. We can do that by using this IR send object that we created. And there's a function on this object called send NEC. And as you can see, it has multiple parameters, but we'll only be using the first two. So some data to be sent and the amount of bits that we sent. So, so what you do is you want to send some hex value. So let's, define the value that we want to send at the top as well. 
So we'll say constant unsigned long uh, hex value. And we'll set it to be 0xfea857. And this should be a 0 instead of an O. On line 22, we can actually use this variable again or constant again. And we want to send the hex value, and it's 32 bits. Now, like I said, we want to add a small delay, so let's delay for 200 milliseconds. This concludes all of the code we have to write for the transmitter. So now let's upload our code to the transmitter, and then we'll be looking into the receiver side. As you might remember from our previous videos, to upload our code, we can just navigate to the platform IO button here and select the upload button. Once the project has been successfully uploaded, let's open up a new Visual Studio window and let's look at the receiver side. So I'll open up a new window and then navigate to Platform IO dashboard again. Create a new project with the name of IR Receiver and select the Arduino Uno board again. And click Finish. And once your project has been successfully loaded, we'll have to add the library again. So let's search for IR Remote again. Make sure it's the IR Remote made by Sheriff. Select the project, IR Receiver. Add the library to the project. And then we'll navigate to the code. So for a receiver, we'll have to include the library again. So IR Remote. So now let's define some pins. We define two pins this time, one for the receiver and one for the LED. So we'll const int receive pin, which is free, and then const int LED pin, which is number seven. And like we did in the sender, we created an IR send object, but this time we want to receive an infrared signal, so we create a IR receive object. And we'll call it IR receive. And we'll pass in the receive pin to the constructor. Now what we want is a list of results, and we can use that by using this built-in decode results class. So let's create an object called results for it. And then we also want to keep track of the state of the LED. So what we do is we create a bool for it and should be on or should LED be on and we'll set it to false. So now we'll also need this hex value again that we used in the transmitter side. Make sure to use the same value across the transmitter and the receiver. So we'll say constant unsigned long expected hex and we'll say it's 0x FEA857. So now for our setup code, we want to enable incoming infrared signals. We can do that by using a function on the IR receive object. So IR receive dot enable. IR in, and then we have to set the pin mode for the LED pin to be output again because we want to send signals to this LED. And then for our loop, we want to say if the LED should be on, then we digital write to the LED. We'll send a high signal, and if the LED should not be turned on, we send a low signal. The next thing we want to do is decode the received signal from, the, from our infrared receiver. So what we do is if irreceive.decode, then we'll Pass in the results. So, and the results. So what this does is actually multiple things. This function returns true if there was anything to decode, and it returns false if there was nothing to decode. So 
In plain English, this means if an infrared signal has been detected, so if there was anything to decode, we want to check, hey, is this result the same as what we expected? So we're only picking up the signal that we, with our created remote, sent, as opposed to just any signal that any remote sends over infrared. So all we do here is just, if the LED should be turned on, we say it should be turned off, and vice versa. So after all of this has been done, we say IR receive to resume. So it picks up signals again. That completes the code for our receiver. So let's upload it and look at the result. And once this is done, we've actually finished the project.